and the worlds to dust. Looking for those who robbed me of my glory. I will stride across their bones. <laughs> Divided, too separate to be one. No protectors here. This world will fall, like all the others. For Dark Side, I have turned one hundred thousand worlds to dust. When this world is scorched, all of existence shall be mine. The whole world is mourning, grieving over a symbol. Let's hope you're not too late. It's like they were afraid of him. Fly, son. It's time. I made a promise on his grave. His world will join the others. What do we have to lose? No us without him. We'll do this together. Get down! wanted me back for a reason. I need to find out why. Evil does not sleep. It waits. Something is coming. Back to the Dark Ages. The devil and his army in hell. The world is broken. This is the only way. I watched your island burn. Show him your fear! We have no fear! He said the Age of Heroes would never come again. Don't engage alone. We do this together. Whatever happened to you, you have gifts now. Everything breaks for you. I can't wait to see what you can pick them up. In the world of ones and zeros, you are the absolute master. These boxes will get inside you and find your weaknesses and your fears. Take your place among the brave ones. I'm not broken. And I'm not alone. I want you to listen to me, Barry. Because I mean this. I'm putting together a team. People with special abilities. You can be whatever you want to be. I can't sit here and watch you run in place. You'll have to run faster than you've ever attempted. has come. Take up your mother's trident. This is a bad idea. Fighting the devil and his army. And now... Welcome back, everyone. This is going to be my new Justice League Snyder Cut trailer. Zack Snyder's been dropping a whole bunch of new clips, so we'll break it all down. There's a bunch of Easter eggs, and the movie is dropping next week. Unless you were trying to watch Tom and Jerry just a couple days ago. Then you probably got to see it a couple days early. I'll explain what was going on with that, too, for everybody that wondered why the movie leaked out just a couple days ago. But be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. I'll be doing a bunch of videos for it next week. It's going to be over four hours long, so there's going to be a lot of stuff to talk about between that and Falcon and Winter Soldier episodes dropping. But just to explain what happened with the Snyder Cut leak a couple days ago, it wasn't quite as big a deal as people made it out to be. It was just that inside the United States, a bunch of people reported that when they were trying to watch Tom and Jerry on HBO Max, it would queue up the Snyder Cut. So they were like, wow, you know, I clicked on Tom and Jerry and wound up watching a pretty decent movie. 
Everyone was posting all their memes. It was more of a technical error. Just some person behind the scenes fixed the bug within a couple hours. So the call was coming from inside the building. So it wasn't like some malicious hack or anything like that. It wasn't like someone was trying to take it from their servers. It was just an accidental bug that they fixed pretty quickly. But because the movie was over four hours long and they said they fixed it really quickly, I don't think that anybody actually got to watch the entire version of the movie. But if you saw people posting about this, like, hey, I'm watching the Snyder Cut right now, that was actually a real thing. It really did happen. But just starting with the new footage, you start with the Steppenwolf scenes, you get a much better look at him in the actual movie and a lot of voiceover dialogue from him. He sounds very different than he sounded during the theatrical cut. But there's also a brand new Dark Side scene with new Dark Side voiceover, so you get to hear more of what he actually sounds like in the film. But the first voiceover is Steppenwolf's speech, the full version of his No Lanterns, No Kryptonians, No Protectors speech. Just talking about how the modern world has become divided, setting the stage for the Justice League to come together. Then you see the Parademons dragging the Atlanteans out of the water onto dry land. The way the Aquaman movie explained that is that only special Atlanteans like the royalty were actually able to breathe normally on land just because of their unique biology that was somehow different from normal Atlanteans. So if you drug one of them onto land, you'd be suffocating them, basically. But mostly, Steppenwolf and Darkseid convert their defeated enemies into more parademons to just keep expanding their army. It's a very Game of Thrones, Night King scenario, like where he kills your troops, then raises them back up as his own undead soldiers, growing his army exponentially over time as you keep trying to fight them. Then you see Steppenwolf squaring off with Wonder Woman inside the cooling tower with a giant axe weapon. Then another scene of him cracking the earth. I believe this is back on Themyscira, leaving that cool symbol burned into the ground. And him using that mother box he took from the Amazons to have a cosmic zoom call with Darkseid, who's still back on Apocalypse. For Darkseid. Then we get that new Darkseid voiceover dialogue. I have turned a hundred thousand worlds to dust. And when this world is scorched, all of existence shall be mine. With a bunch of new scenes of that Dark Side War flashback scene. I'm not sure if Dark Side's speech is coming during that actual flashback scene or if the speech is from present day when he's preparing to come back to Earth himself to conquer it. That all leads up to the events of that nightmare alternate future. In the flashbacks, he's still supposed to be Uxus. He hasn't taken the Dark Side name yet. And I'm assuming that also means that he hasn't taken the full Omega Force. Like, that's why you don't see him using his Omega Beams when he's fighting all these combined armies. But he does have the Omega symbol in his chest upside down. I guess just foreshadowing that future. What he's talking about during that speech, though, why Earth is the key to him conquering the rest of the universe, I think is more to do with him getting the three Mother Boxes back. Because those three ones, just based on my understanding of the information that they're presenting in the movie are the only ones in existence and he can't just create more mother boxes and I believe they're supposed to be the key to the anti-life equation and the anti-life equation is really what his end game level power up is that'll allow him to take over the entire universe in one fell swoop. It's like Thanos during Avengers Infinity War before he acquired the Infinity Stones he spent hundreds and hundreds of years of his very long lifespan just flying around the universe from planet to planet conquering them balancing them quote unquote so to speak that's what the infinity gauntlet was for giving him that boss level upgrade that allowed him to do it with a single snap of his fingers so for dark side in the dc universe that's the mother boxes and the anti-life equation then there's the other new scene of what seems like dark side where you see his hand on superman while he's kneeling down so this might be from the nightmare flash forward scenes because superman is wearing the black costume or it could be Steppenwolf in present day when he first comes back. But the whole thing with the nightmare timeline is that Superman has been emceed by the anti-life equation because Lois Lane has died and she was sort of his connection to humanity. So once he loses that, it's much easier for Darkseid to turn him. Then you have the other new scene of Superman when he first comes back, returning to the Fortress of Solitude Kryptonian ship to grab a new suit. And you see all the different versions. There's actually way more than we've seen in the other deleted scenes. There's the Kryptonian Warframe suit from the comics. The footage is kind of low resolution and blurry, but this armor in the back here on the left looks like it's the same armor that Jor-El wore during Man of Steel, like just traditional Kryptonian armor from the House of El. Then this other new armor on the right seems like it's either Zod's armor that he's just taken into custody or similar armor as Zod was wearing, more militaristic Kryptonian armor. Then you have the classic blue suit, and then they just stop short of him grabbing the black suit. But you see him step through the doorway later wearing the black suit. Then you have the scene of Wonder Woman grabbing the warning arrow that Hippolyta fired from Themyscira when Steppenwolf attacked. The voiceover dialogue of Steppenwolf taunting her later in the movie. I watched your island burn. 
Then you get the new cyborg scene of him seeing visions of himself and his family before his accident. The background also looks kind of post-apocalyptic, like it's the nightmare future timeline. Then there's a bunch of new flash scenes, so you get all the voiceover from his father and from a couple other characters like Batman, talking about him running faster than he's ever run before as he's saving Iris West and the footage of him later in the movie when he's running into the Speed Force. You get all this dialogue about him altering the future, altering the past. That's just a reference to Flashpoint in his time travel abilities. There's also the scene of him in the Nightmare timeline wearing his future armor, like with a special faceplate that you saw during Batman v Superman. We even see Deathstroke in that scene too with the big mohawk. Then you get the new scene of Aquaman and Atlantis going to the statue of King Atlan to take his suit of armor and the voiceover from Volko telling him to take up his mother's trident. There were actually a lot of Volko scenes that we'll see in the Snyder Cut that were deleted out of the theatrical cut. But I've already done a video for the new Martian Manhunter scene in that last big trailer in the Batman version of this trailer, so I'll put a link for that in the description. But just a big reminder, the Snyder Cut is releasing next week. I'll do a video for it on the day, probably for the new version of the ending, just explaining what's different, what the Easter eggs are, and what would have happened in the sequels had Zack Snyder made them. They basically revealed the entire plot of what Justice League 2 and Justice League 3 would have been because it would have been three Justice League movies, a full trilogy like you kind of expect. So there'll be all kinds of videos about that. But here's the thing. Falcon and Winter Soldier Episode 1 is releasing the day after the Snyder Cut. So I'll be doing videos for all those things. What'll probably happen is, is I'll just go back and forth between Falcon and Winter Soldier videos in the Justice League Snyder Cut videos till I get through all the stuff. But if you spotted any big Easter eggs in this that I didn't talk about in the video or in my other previous trailer videos, just write them below in the comments. And I know the Flash TV show is back and I haven't done videos about that yet. I'm waiting for them to get to the new storyline. So eventually I will probably do a Flash TV show video, but probably not for a couple weeks. While you wait for everything, everyone click here for that brand new Falcon and Winter Soldier trailer with the Doctor Strange scene and click here for my full WandaVision episode 9 finale video in all my WandaVision episodes. Thank you so much for watching, everyone stay safe, and I'll see you guys tonight.